untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a 5 color dragon deck featuring Tiamat from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon god with flying that has all 5 colors and when Tiamat enters the battlefield, if we cast it, we get to search our library for up to 5 dragon cards not named Tiamat that each have different names, reveal them and put them into our hand. So Tiamat is the ultimate win condition that provides a ton of card advantage when it comes into play. And let's take a look at all the dragons that we have in our deck besides Tiamat. And for mana we've got a single copy of Leyline Tyrant, for mana 4-4 for, for Flyer, says we don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end, so that's one way to potentially ramp into our Tiamat by accumulating extra mana. And when the Leyline Tyrant dies, we may pay any amount of red mana, and when we do it deals that much damage to any target, so it's kind of like a ticking time bomb. Then we also have two copies of Galzath Prismari, the 4 mana 3 4 legendary Elder Dragon with flying. When it enters the battlefield, it creates a treasure token, and artifacts we control can tap to add one mana of any color that we can only spend to cast instant or sorcery spells. Although, of course, we do always have the option of sacrificing the treasure token to help us ramp into Tiamat a turn sooner. Then at 5 mana we've got a full playset of Goldspan Dragon as one of the better ways to ramp into Tiamat. We get a 5 mana 4-4 four, four Dragon with Flying and Haste, and when Goldspan Dragon attacks or becomes a target of a spell, we get to make a treasure token, and treasures we control can be sacrificed to add 2 mana of any one color instead of just one, so Goldspan Dragon can easily set up Tiamat on the following turn. Then we also have a one of copy of Adult Gold Dragon, 5 mana 4-3 Flyer with Lifelink and Haste, and a single copy of a Desert Doom, 5 mana 5-5, five, five, a legendary dragon with flying, has Ward 4 as long as it's untapped, and when Desert Doom deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card, and then if we have fewer than 3 cards in hand we draw cards equal to the difference. Then going up our curve at 6 mana, we have one Inferno of the Star Mounts, 6-6 six, six with Flying and Haste, that's also legendary, cannot be countered, and has Fire Breathing, so a single red mana gives it plus 1 plus 0 until end turn, and if it somehow gets to 20 power we can deal 20 damage to any target. And then we have Old Gnawbone, the 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon from Forgotten Realms. It flies, and whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to make that many treasure tokens. It's also very synergistic with our Goldspan dragon, giving us ample mana to maybe get to 20 power on our Inferno of the Star Mounts. Then taking a look at our non-dragon spells, at 2 mana we can play Orb of the Dragon Kind as a way to ramp into our more expensive dragons, since we can pay 1 mana, tap it, and then add 2 mana in any combination of colors that we can only spend to cast dragon spells or activate abilities of dragons, and for a red mana we can tap and sacrifice the orb to look at the top 7 cards of our library, and then reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into our hand. And we've got about a 90% hit rate on Orb of the Dragon Kind if we decide to sacrifice it, and then we've got the full playset of Dragon's Fire as a cheap spot removal spell that can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker unless we reveal a dragon from our hand or we control a dragon, in which case we can deal damage equal to that dragon's power, so we can pretty easily deal 7 damage if we control or reveal a Tiamat. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Seize the Spoils as an additional cost to cast it. We have to discard a card and then we get to draw two cards and make a treasure token so that can help us get rid of our more expensive dragons that we cannot cast and help us ramp into our more expensive dragons at the same time. And then we also have two copies of You Happen on a Glade, 3 mana instant, and we can either search our library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them and put them into our hand, or we can return target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. So in the early game this can help us hit our land drops and fix our mana to make sure we can have all the mana to cast Tiamat, and then later in the game if we already have a lot of mana we can potentially get back a dragon from our graveyard. And all these 3 mana spells are also very important to enable a Draconic Intervention, a 4 mana rare sorcery, and as an additional cost to cast it we have to exile an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard, and then Draconic Intervention deals X damage to each non-dragon creature where X is the exiled card's mana value, and creatures dealt damage this way get exiled instead of going to the graveyard. 
So Draconic Intervention, an excellent sweeper in this deck that's kind of slow to get going, so we are quite vulnerable to aggressive strategies where the Draconic Intervention comes in handy, but of course it does require us to have some early setup cards to end up in the graveyard so we can exile those. And then we also have a one-off copy of Unexpected Windfall, similar to Seize the Spoils, but we get to make two treasures instead of just one, and it costs four mana, and it's also an instant. And then going over the mana base, we get to play with four copies of Temple of the Dragon Queen, which can enter the battlefield untapped if we control a dragon or reveal a dragon from our hand. And as the temple enters the battlefield, we have to choose a color, and then it will make that color. Then we also have a one-off copy of Evolving Wilds, alongside one of each basic land to search up with our Evolving Wilds, and our Happen on a Glade. And then we have one of each pathway, except for four of the blue-red pathway, and four of the red-green pathway, since those are kind of the main colors in the deck. So yeah, that's it. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Early removal with Dragon's Fire. Can potentially deal two to everything with Intervention. And then Goldspan ramps into Nobo nicely. Which land to fetch here? Probably don't need an extra red source. So, black or white. Opponent mono green hits us for one. Get a planes. Okay, can play orb instead. Sets up a turn four gold span. Opponent will ramp. So it looks. Like a green ramp deck, field trip. Could get a way to destroy the orb here with the containment breach gets environmental sciences into another dryad. So our opponent's pretty serious about ramping. Could dragons fire the dryads while we still can. Yeah, don't mind that. Slow them down a little bit. Although dragons fire does deal seven, so maybe it's a waste to use it on the dryads. And presumably they're going to present a creature I can kill with it that's actually worth killing. So wait. Sciences. Uh -huh. Opponent is blue-green. So it gets their missing color. Snarl comes into play untapped. Three unknowns left in hand. Florahedron is one of them. We can let that one slide. Okay. So, I think it's gold span time. And then I'll still have my Dragon's Fire available to maybe kill a Koma before it can make a Serpent, if that's what the opponent is ramping into. So, let's play this. Play gold span, thanks to the orb. Yeah, opponent stamped out. Yeah, the main concern would be our opponent resolving Koma and us being unable to kill it once they get the first Serpent to make it indestructible with Dragon's Fire. That's no longer a concern. It's going to be an Innkeeper instead. Maybe an Elrond's Epiphany. Nope, Cyclone Summoner. So with that trigger on the stack, I could decide to Dragon's Fire it. Which seems worthwhile. So reveal a dragon. And then... I'll reveal Nobo and keep Tiamat as a surprise. And then have to play this as a red source into Goldspan. And then I could play Orb. Although it is tempting to keep the treasure around so I can play one of my 7 mana dragons next turn. Innkeeper into Cultivator. So a lot of ramp, but our opponent's just holding a Florahedron. So yeah, unless they top deck something like Koma soon, we should be in good shape. So I can play a main phase Gnawbone. Goldspan hits. 
makes 5 treasures total, which are worth 10 mana. And I can still cast a Tiamat here if I want. Seems pretty good. And I have to be a little careful with discarding to hand size. So I might not overdo it here. Three. I guess we'll get four dragons. Can cast Happen on a Glade, play a land. Alright, uh, this might be enough. Search two lands. Alright. Don't have to discard to hand size. Glimpse, gonna have a look. So currently Intervention deals three. Field trip. Can maybe get a removal spell. Teachings to draw three, also pretty good. But our opponent's down to four mana here, five. And they're staring down lethal in the air. Another field trip. Not sure if that's gonna save them here. There's a containment breach. Opponent foretells a card. And yeah, that's game. About to make a lot of treasure with old Gnawbone. So probably could have cast everything in our hand if we wanted to. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and this ends a little bit on the slow side, but we can potentially catch back up with Intervention, and uh, Windfall provides a 4-mana card to deal 4 damage. So I'll try it. Could definitely die on turn 3 or 4 before we get to cast Intervention. And red whites does potentially point towards a more aggressive deck. Blood Age Generals, maybe a Red White Spirits deck. And yeah, there's a War Singer. Alright, so this uh, intervention is going to be pretty key for us to stabilize. No lack of late game cards. So I'm going to take at least 5 and then another 5 before I can cast Intervention. Yeah, we could be dead before we pull it off. For now, play planes. Take 5. Clarion Spirits, okay. Into an Usher. Alright, it's a lot of damage coming in. Cease spoils a turn late. If we cast that last turn, I could have Intervention for 3, which is why we're maxing out on Seas and not Windfall. But I guess now we might as well go for the Windfall instead, deal 4 damage. And can maybe pick up a Dragon's Fire to kill one creature here. So I'll reveal Tiamat's name red. And I guess Windfall we can still play at instant speed, so there's no reason to do it now. Showdown. Okay, at least we're not dead on board, but that is going to refuel them and find more action. So if they pump with general 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we'll go to 1. Yeah. That happens. I guess now we windfall. And then I can maybe discard one Tiamat. Okay. Another Usher. Alright, so let's see here. I can even play Goldspan, attack, and then still Draconic Intervention. Seems good.
And intervention deals damage to non dragons, so gold span is safe. Alright, that to a haste creature. Another war singer we can handle. Alrighty, so can cast Tiamat. Goldspan could attack, or we could leave it back as an extra blocker, just in case. And then take it from there. So definitely want to get a life game one. Old Gnawbone can generate a ton of mana. And go with more haste creatures, extra gold span. And then I don't mind discarding a couple lands to hand size here. Grab uh I don't know, Goloseth. Sure. Can still play a land out. And no attacks for now. And then I don't think I need Caesar spoils especially. Another showdown, okay. Skyclave can't exile Goldspan luckily. But they can pump up their Warsinger. So that's gonna force a trade on Tiamat. Opponent stays back. Dragon's Fire's excellence. Alright, time to have some fun here. Can play Gnawbone before attacks. C11. I guess we can just kill our opponents. It's kind of lame. Wanted to play Gnawbone, make a ton of treasure first. But, sure. I guess we'll attack for lethal. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Orb gives us turn 3 Galazeth, which can maybe ramp into bigger stuff. We'll still need some lands off the top, of course. Ah, uh, sure, this is fine. Okay. Orb also fixes for mana, so makes the blue for Galazeth. But we do need double red for some of our non-dragon spells. Alright, next turn Goldspan. Up against maybe a blue-black control deck. But we've got a nice start. Goldspan ramps straight into our 7 drops. This one might get countered or killed some other way. Still leaves enough mana for a 7 mana dragon next turn. Oh, saw it coming. Happy to get that out of the way. The fact that they cast one out of exile means they don't have another counter spell in hand. So that's promising for resolving Tiamat. Or Nobone. And then we get to make 3 treasure. Although. Resolving Tiamat while we have the chance is a pretty good deal. So let's go for it. I guess I can attack first, not that it matters. So this might get killed, but it should resolve unless they top deck the counter spell. Divide by zero. Alright, I guess uh, that'll do it too. So now I'm one mana short of replaying it. Okay, so I'll tank for three.
and probably play our cards out at instant speed so we don't run into more counter spells. Graven Law resolves. Only keeps one card. Well, I guess I didn't get priority to cast my Happen on a Glade, which is unfortunate. Probably should have put a stop on end step. Right, poisons Galazeth. So, in response, I could Windfall and then still use Galazeth's ability to cast my Happen on a Glade, which would mean discarding Gnawbone, but so be it. Could also get back Gnawbone now that we drew a land. Sure. Or gold span, maybe even better. But have to do it while Galzath is still in play and we can tap our treasures without sacrificing them. So now I could play Goldspan and then still potentially play Tiamat afterwards. All right, that also gets countered, so that's maybe the card they kept on top with Gravenlore. Alrighty, so... We'll just pass and then hope to resolve Tiamat next turn, get more dragons. Opponent foretells a card, could be another sword coming, could be Epiphany or a Poison a Cup. Could play another orb first, I suppose. It gets negated, that's fine. Another divine by zero, perhaps. Alright, that resolves. And we're almost empty handed, so can easily get five dragons. And these all look good. And we'll see how a control deck handles this. Right, it was a behold to the multiverse. So we've got plenty of hasty dragons. Do have to watch out for blood on the snow as a potential sweeper. That can still get our dragons, so don't want to overextend necessarily. Right, poison the cup on Tiamat. So how much mana do we have? Eight, nine, ten mana potentially with a treasure. So I could double five drop. Could go Galazeth plus a uh, five drop as well. So gold span's the one that can give us more mana, which is the most useful to get going. Alright, that resolved pretty swiftly. And then I don't mind gold span and then hit for eight. Puts them in range of Inferno being lethal. Right, Baleful Mastery and Gold Span at least leaves a treasure behind. And they're still within range of an Inferno killing them. Right, there's a blood on the snow as expected. 
nothing to get back. And a sciences, so for opponents tapped out, they seem pretty dead to our inferno. Should have enough red mana left to pump it up. Let's see. I can use my orb to make more red. Cast this. And yeah, can pump it three times. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Double Dragon's Fire's early removal, pairs nicely with Goldspan attacking and making a treasure. Can still cast a fire afterwards. Got our blue for Galazeth as well. Opponent Mono Red, but not a particularly aggressive start. Okay, play the orb out. So next turn we can already gold span Blade Historian, fair enough. And then make an extra red probably. And then I might want to kill the Blade Historian now. In case of any pump spells. Next turn we can play an adult gold dragon and still dragon's fire afterwards. Alright, it's gonna be a double frostbite situation. That works. And a javelin here. So adult gold dragon looks good here. Gold span dragon soaked up that uh, frostbite so the adult gold dragon could live. Now we're seeing some goblins, so they might have some goblin synergy in there. Swarming goblins might be worth taking out, but we can play Galzath first and then maybe use our treasures with Galzath's ability so we don't actually have to uh, sacrifice them. Now I'm lacking Seize the Spoils discard pathway. Okay, and uh, hit for four. Could keep a land in hand to discard. Could play an extra orb out. Can still sacrifice the orb, so we've got a lot of options. Probably fine playing the land still. Alright, there's a Blade Historian, which is probably what I want to take out here. Then I can still block a goblin. Guess I'll block the 1 1, sure. Sack orb. Can even use the orb with Galazeth too, which is pretty cool. And yeah, an inferno seems like a fitting way to end the game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Dragons fire into seas, ramps into our adult gold dragon. And uh, I guess we'll hide a little bit of information for now. Put 
put on black white or even asper colored. All right, it looks like a venture deck. Yeah, that seems worth taking out. Can play the orb instead of Seize's spoils, although Seize sets up my intervention a bit better. And let's go with the orb, that way you don't waste the treasure casting the adult gold dragon next turn. Berwin is going to venture into the dungeon. Goes for a Tomb of Annihilation. Alright, don't mind the adult gold dragon here. And then we want to set up Intervention, dealing three to non-dragons. Gold Dragon down. And point's going to fly Barrowin. So hoping to pick up a land so I can play Galazeth into Seize the Spoils. Alright, perfect. So I'm gonna use the orb to cast Galazeth here. And then I can Seize the Spoils using Galazeth to tap our treasure, discard another Seize, keep my intervention. Alright, perfect. I've got a blocker for Barrowin. And if they add more creatures to the board, we can deal three to everything. So there are still two steps away from completing the dungeon. Vanishing Verse exiles my orb. Still have treasures to provide mana fixing, and yeah, we can just play Tiamat here. No need to cast Intervention yet. So this can be white. And our opponent explodes at the side of Tiamat. The end boss, just too powerful for the venture deck. So yeah, we get to see our five color dragon deck in action. It's maybe not the best against any controlling strategy, although we did manage to beat blue-black control even through a few counter spells, but those are probably matchups that can be tough where the opponent can just counter a few of our relevant dragons, kill the other ones, and then we're not left with a whole lot, but if we can resolve Tiamat, it's usually too much for the opponent to handle. And uh, yeah, creature decks, we're gonna need to draw our early interaction, the Dragon's Fire and the Intervention, otherwise we can get run over. So it definitely has some weaknesses, it's definitely very draw dependent, and you can run into some mana issues since we are a 5 color deck after all, but it's mostly a red based deck and most of our lands can produce red mana if needed, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But yeah, a pretty interesting 5 color dragon deck that can easily pick up more powerful dragons in future expansions. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.